Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MPGO Traders. My name is Taryn and let's talk about the Dominaria set review for white. So I'm technically going to be starting at number one on the slot as far as the like the set numbers go. So actually number one is not a white creature. It's actually a colorless planeswalker. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But of course, before I get into it, make sure to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We have a ton of content coming out for Dominaria in the near future. This next coming week will be full of set reviews, then a pre-release video. And of course, the following week will be full of deck techs for standard. I cannot wait to get back into standard. I'm just super pumped and Dominaria area is looking like probably one of the best sets in the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years, probably since, you know, Ravnica or Innistrad, like it's crazy. There's just so much like great value and of course flavor within the set as well. But let's start off with number one here, Karn Siren of Urza. Siren? Cyan. Cyan. Yeah, that one. <laughs> it's a four colorless, uh, five loyalty planeswalker Karn. Plus one, reveal the top two cards of your library. An opponent chooses one of them, put that card into your hand, and exile the other with a silver counter on it. Negative one, put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand. And negative two, create a zero zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. Um, Karn here is ridiculous. Um, also love the art, and for some whatever reason they gave him like you know a loincloth <laughs> previous iterations of Karn doesn't have like he doesn't have like any clothes he's just straight up like bulk uh, you know straight up swole but this one they gave him a loincloth which is funny um, plus one is pretty decent being able to filter through your deck that's kind of cool and even if you like you know they pick the, the bad one as far as like the two cards you still can get it back with your negative one which is actually very very good too being four uh, and coming in with five is actually very good as well um, and the negative two is ridiculous it can be like a great game ender um, if you're playing like an artifact based deck and, and since this is a colorless like planeswalker then this is probably going to be an artifact based deck in standard and that's amazing obviously this is a mythic so you're not really going to see this in draft or sealed that much obviously you can open into a pack of this and if you do oh, congratulations this can go into any like deck you're going to build um karn is super good though and i love it we'll definitely be playing this in standard maybe even modern i don't even know this card is super good um we'll definitely try and build a brawl deck around it as well uh, let's move on to our white cards starting out with adamant will love the art on these cards i mean seriously there's just so much good art in this set it's kind of insane this is a two uh, uh, mana instant target creature gets plus two plus two and gains indestructible until end of turn not too bad um this is going to be a common one of the things i'm going to have to kind of point to is the actual set symbols the white gray gold and like mythic um they're very kind of hard to differentiate from each other the white and especially the silver um so i'm gonna probably make sure I look at the bottom there where it says C for a common and uncommon. So if I do get that wrong on any, on any of these set stuff, please let me know in the comments below. You know, I'm sure you'll let me know with the time marker. That would be great because <laughs> uh, sometimes looking at it just kind of at first glance, it, this looks like an uncommon to me as far as like the set symbol, although it is an, a, a common overall. But in Draft and Steel, this is a card you want to pull into. It's a great, uh, you know, like decent combat trick. You want to pull into this as soon as you can. I like it a lot. Um, this probably won't see any kind of standard play though. Moving on here, we have Avon Entry. This is a four mana three two flyer. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, you're going to pick this, you know, as a like, you know, more top to mid end uh, pick in draft and sealed. Probably going to pick this more in draft than you will sealed, uh, since your pull might not be as impactful as in a sealed deck list. Um, but I do like this card overall, and of course the art is fantastic. Uh, moving on, we have Baird Steward of Argive. Argive or Ar Argive? I don't know. Four mana two four legendary creature human soldier. This is an uncommon here with vigilance. So a two four with vigilance for four is not too terrible. Creatures can't attack you or a Planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one colorless for each of those creatures. So I really like this. This is kind of like a like a mini ghostly prison, which is not too bad. Um, for four mana, two four legendary creature that's uncommon. You're probably going to see this quite often in a draft. Um, I do think that this is a nice draft card to get into. Um, maybe there'll be a lockdown strategy in standard with this deck or with this particular card. I do like that a lot. Archangel of Thune and things like that uh, previously with a kind of lockdown strategy like this have seen play in standard. So I think Baird will probably see a play in standard as well. But for draft and sealed, I think this card is just okay being a 2-4 with Vigilance and of course locking down our opponent if they're low on mana for attacking out. I think that's nice. Next up here, we have Benalish Honor Guard. This is a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. It's a common uh, human knight 
Vanellish Honor Guard gets plus one plus zero for each legendary creature you control. So I like this card a lot, and there are a ton of legendary creatures in the actual set here. So if you can get into a lot of them and draft and steal, this card is going to be a huge bomb coming in, being maybe a three or four or five two. The problem, of course, is the toughness there. It doesn't get plus one plus one, it just gets plus one plus oh. So it's basically just a big bomb uh, that can just trade with anything on our opponent's side of the field. So I do like it for the ability to attack out and the ability to grow, but I do think just a two mana two two, just a bear uh, with a side. You know, kind of an upside there is just fine too. Uh, moving on here, we have Banalish Marshall. This is a three white mana. So this is gonna be if you're in white all the way in uh, draft and seal. This is a rare though. It's a three three. Other creatures you control get plus one plus one. This is a really good anthem ability. Knights are kind of coming back in a big way in Dominaria. I really like that. Um, I like Banalish Marshall here for a standard deck list here. Maybe there'll be a cool like mono white. Um, Weenies deck. I think that's an interesting idea. Uh, but for Draft and Sealed, this is a card that is in three solid white colors. You probably won't want to get into it if it is your rare, um, unless you have a lot of good stuff in white as well. Um, I would definitely see that this might get passed around the table a little bit if uh, you do not get into white that much. But I think in standard, this card is just fine here. Moving up to number seven, we have Blessed Light. This is a five mana instant exile target creature or enchantment. This is a common here, so this is going to be one of those nice bombs you want to pick or removal pieces you want to pick in draft and sealed. So five mana exile target creature planeswalker, that's just fine. Um, you know, five mana removal spells have pretty much been the mainstay for a long time in draft and sealed, and this really doesn't change anything. It does give you the upside to get an enchantment as well, which is not not terrible, uh, but really the exile target creature is what you want here. And I like that it's just kind of like exile target creature, not attacking creature or defending creature or whatever. It's just target creature, and that's fine too. So this will be probably like a mid to high pick in draft and sealed. Won't see any kind of standard play. Uh, moving on here, we have Board the Weatherlight. Love the art here. This is a two mana sorcery. This is also an uncommon. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a historic card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any random order. So this is an artifacts, legendaries, and sagas are historic. So that's a good indicator there for what you want for historic. Um, this is interesting. I'm not really necessarily sure I want this in a draft and sealed pull or pick necessarily. There are quite a few artifacts in the set, um, and I do like that there are quite a few legendaries as well. Not that many sagas if you want to really if you really want to like boil that boil that down um but i do think board the weather light might come in some play with some like you know casual deck or maybe even a standard deck uh, in standard uh, but i do think board the weather light for a draft pool and a steel pool might be a card you want to pass up just for now because there's so much other power or more powerful cards in the actual set here moving up we have call the calvary this is a four mana sorcery create two 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 white night creature tokens with vigilance this card is super good and in draft and sealed this card is amazing um if you get into it it's also a common so you can get into multiples of these four mana for two two twos with vigilance is very good um i do like this a lot i wish it was instant if it was instant it probably would have been uncommon but at sorcery speed this card is just fine too um i think this card might see some play in a weird like anointing processions deck uh in standard making two twos and with vigilance is better than making one ones obviously uh so for the four mana stings not as much but i do think in draft and seal this card is super good if you want to go for a wide board state here uh, moving up we have charge this card is amazing this is a one uh, mana instant it's a common as well creatures you control get plus one plus one into end of turn this is basically chef at dune's ability here uh on a one mana instant spell this card is ridiculous you're going to want to pull into us if you're in white for sure or splashing into white uh, i love this card especially if you have a wide board strategy with creatures in a standard you might see this if it was if i had a second ability like maybe draw a card or something we might see this a little bit more but i do think draft and sealed this card is going to shine uh, next up here for us we have devant trapper that's uh the Advent Trapper? That's a, uh, you know, I'm not going to try and pronounce that again. <laughs> this is a 3 mana 3 2 Human Archer. Whenever you cast a historic spell, tap target creature and opponent controls. So, this is actually quite good too, and very good at being a, like, kind of tempo advantage for us against our opponent. So, if we have any kind of artifacts, legendaries, or sagas, in our, in our deck, um, the Trapper here is going to hopefully, you know, tap down an opponent's creature and get in for three points of damage. That's very good, especially in Draft and Sealed. And it's only three mana here, and I like that a lot too. So, interesting card. If you get into a lot of uh, legendary, or not hit legendary, if you get into a lot of historic uh, style creature, like deck cards, uh, this will be very, very good too. Moving up here, we have uh, Danitha Capetian. 
Paragon? I'm gonna like skewer a lot of these uh, <laughs> pronunciations. <laughs> Sorry guys. This is a three mana 2-2 two -two legendary creature human knight. First strike, vigilance, lifelink. That's already very good. This is gonna be good. This could almost be a first pickable card in a pack if your rare isn't that good. Or as any equipment spells you cast cost one colorless less to cast. This card is probably gonna be a build around card in a blue white auras deck or maybe even a like white red auras deck. Um, there's so many good auras that are in Dominaria and the rest of standard right now that it's kind of got to like a peak where you can just build any kind of aura list you want uh, and kind of get away with it. So Danitha here is amazing. I love this card. This is a high pick for me in Draft and Sealed and probably a play standard, standard playable card as well. Moving up here, we have Daring Archaeologist. This is a fun card. This is a four mana creature artificer. This is also a rare. It's a 3-3. When Daring Archaeologist enters a battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. And whenever you cast a historic spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Daring Archaeologist. So this card is super good if you have a lot of historic cards in your deck list in draft and sealed. Um, this might not be a rare you want to go with though, because it is a rare that just gets larger over time, which is nice, but at the same time, you have lots of removal in the format as well. So in draft and sealed, this might be a lower pick for me. If it's a open pack, you might get past this uh, several times. In uh, standard though, this might be a cool build around card for a nice like uh, against the odds deck, you know, like Saffron Olive style uh, deck. I think this card is fun for that. Um, but besides that, this card is uh, just, just, just okay. I like the art the most here. Uh, moving up here, we have Dauntless Bodyguard. So one mana, two, one human knight. That alone makes it a pretty high pick in draft and sealed. As Dauntless Guard enters the battlefield, choose another creature you control. Sacrifice Dauntless Bodyguard, the chosen creature gains indestructible until end of turn. So this is actually very good for us. It's a one mana, two, one. So that's super good being able to be uh, very aggressive, but when it comes to the battlefield, we choose something on our side of the field that we don't want to die, let's say like a big bomb, and our opponent has a removal spell, we can just sacrifice Dauntless Bodyguard and make that card indestructible for until the end of turn. That's very good, um, and it can also make, make it so that uh, we can actually trade really well into um, some good attacks or blocks too. So I like this card a lot. It's a very high pick for me um, in Draft and Sealed. Might not see any kind of standard play, but it is an uncommon, so you might not see it as much in Draft and Sealed. Uh, dub here, this is a three minute enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus two has first strike and is a knight in addition to its other type so three mana plus two plus two first strike that's pretty decent uh in a uh common slot here for draft and sealed i think this one might be a nice uh pull into if this had lifelink on it i think it would be a lot better for us a uh, lifelink is a much more important mechanic in draft and sealed but i think the first strike is very very good especially plus two plus two first strike that would make it ridiculous for us um in standard again that might be in a auras list we don't really know yet uh, but i th do think in draft and sealed this is probably a like mid to high or low to high or low to mid there we go <laughs> pick in draft and sealed uh, Evra, a Halcyon Witness. This is a 6 mana 4 for a rare legendary creature avatar with lifeling. We can pay for exchange your life total with Evra, Halcyon Witness's power. Um, you know, bad, bad cards exist for good cards to look better. This card is not that great. Um, I mean, it's it's okay if you get it into your rare. Um, you may want to get a, a 4 mana 4 for a lifelinker in draft and sealed. That's fine. The ability here is, um, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, again, if you can make the witness like larger, I think that would be fine, maybe. Um, but because it's a 4-4, uh, exchanging your life total down to 4 uh, is just, uh, it's kind of terrible. I guess it kind of gets you out of bolt range if you're playing modern, maybe. <laughs> but um, you definitely want to stay away from this card uh, for standard. I think in Draft and Sealed, if you get this as your rare, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to pass it, unless you just want to have a nice 4-4 life linker for 6. Uh, moving up here, we have Excavation Elephant. This is a 5-mana 3-5 elephant with Kicker for 2. Kicker is back, which is awesome for me. Uh, when Excavation Elephant enters a battlefield, if it was kicked, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So 5-mana for a 3-5 or 7-mana for a 3-5 to get an artifact back. That's not too bad for a common. I like the big butt on this one especially. I do think this card is just okay. Not, not that great, uh, but not that terrible either. Moving up here, we have Fall of Threns. This is our first Saga card. It's a six mana uh, legendary, or not legendary, it's just an enchantment saga. Um, this is also a rare though. Uh, on the uh, Saga chapter one here, destroy all lands, which is crazy. But for six mana, you know, you can get there. Chapter two, each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. And chapter three, you do the same thing. So you basically go back to four, uh, which is interesting. Uh, but uh, again, this is just a weird rare that uh, you probably won't ever want to get into in draft and sealed. Uh, I do think this card is probably terrible. <laughs> I do think the art is fun. Um, I still am not too fond 
fond of the actual like border on the Saga cards, but I do think this card is nice looking uh, with the art there. Uh, but yeah, this card is uh, not that great. <laughs> please don't, please don't play this in any kind of uh, format. Because <laughs> six, six mana destroy all lands, not, 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 a, not a big fan of that. Moving up here, we have Gideon's Reproach. Uh, Gideon just punches a dude. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is a two mana instant. Gideon's Reproach deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. This is basically like a little bit more pumped up version of Slash of Talons, which was in Rivals. This card is very good. You're going to be picking into it if you like combat tricks or removal uh, spells in white. Um, I like this a lot, especially since it's a, it's a common in Draft and Sealed. Uh, but you will probably not see this card at all in Standard. But you know, the art is nice here. And uh, I love that he's just, just straight up just punching a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Healing Grace is another good card here. It's a one white mana instant. Prevent the next three damage that would be dealt to any target this turn by the source you control, and then you gain three life. So this is pretty nice. While typical life gain spells uh, in standard or draft at the moment, draft and sealed, are not that interesting, uh, actually preventing three damage and gaining three life is actually pretty good, uh, especially when you have lots of two twos and three threes kind of trading blows uh, in the format. So I do think Healing Grace is actually probably a high to low pick or high to mid pick uh, for like a combat trick in the format. This card is pretty decent in white. I definitely think this card it will be an underdog in a lot of people's decks if they get into it. Uh, okay, moving on here, we have History of Banalia. This is a three mana enchantment saga. Chapter one and two, create a two two white creature knight, or knight creature <laughs> with a with token with vigilance. And chapter three, knights you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Uh, this is pretty nice. I do like this quite a lot. Uh, but I do think that um, this card is probably going to be, since it's a mythic, you probably won't ever see this in uh, Draft and Sealed. If you do get into it, maybe try and draft into something white. I do think this card is fun for that if you have uh, knights on the battlefield. Uh, in standard, this might actually push like a cool knight archetype build uh, in from the Dominaria and the Rivals of Ixalan set with Radiant Destiny and things like that. So this is interesting for that for sure. Uh, but I do think right now in Draft and Sealed, this card is just okay. Again, it's a mythic, so you probably won't see it at all. Uh, moving up here, we have Invoke the Divine. Love the uh, art here. This is a three minute instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, you gain four life. So this card is nice, this card is decent. Um, it's a nice like a, uh, you know, like last pick or second to last pick in your draft pool for just some sideboard tech against an artifact or enchantment deck. This card is fine and you, of course you gain some four life. Uh, two, so that's that's good too. Uh, you'll never see this in standard. <laughs> Moving up here, we have Knight of Grace. This card is ridiculous. This is a two mana two two. This is an uncommon first striker, hexproof from black, which is ridiculous already. But Knight of the Grace gets plus one plus zero as long as any player controls a black permanent. So if you're in a like white black deck in Dominarius Drafter Sealed, this card is very good for your side. But if you're also against an opponent with black, this card is also super good because it becomes a three two first striker for two mana. Mana. That's ridiculous. This card is amazing. If you get into it and you're in white, you definitely want to pick this card as a high pick. Even though it isn't uncommon, you probably will see two or three of them, maybe one or two actually, uh, in draft and seal. I think in uh, standard, this card might see some play in a weird knight, de neck, knight deck. Sorry about that. Um, but I do think uh, Knight of Grace is a very good all around card. Um, moving up here, we have Knight of New Manalia. This is a two mana three one human knight. This is basically like the Raptor Champion or Champion Raptor, whatever it was called in Rivals of Ixalan, the 3 1 Raptor. Um, this is okay. This is not going to really win you anything, really. I mean, it's going to trade with something, and that's fine too. Um, love the art here. Wish the art went to something else that was a little bit more impactful. Uh, but I do think a 3 1 for 2 is just gravy. You know, just a good, uh, like, low pick uh, in draft and sealed here. Moving up, we have Quindy, Pride of Femerif. It's these, these names, these names. <laughs> 4 mana 2 2, legendary creature, human knight, with double strike. Creatures you control with First Strike have Double Strike. This card is very interesting because it turns the Knight we just talked about with First Strike into a Double Striker, which is ridiculous. Uh, but it's a 2-2 Double Striker, so it's a 4-mana 2-2. I wish it was a 4-mana 3-3 Double Striker. I know that's a, kind of a lot to ask, uh, but I do think that the 2-2 here does mean it's going to be able to trade with a lot of things um, kind of accidentally, uh, not that well, uh, with, a, with a, you know, kind of the combat tricks out in the uh, format right now. I do think this card is, a, like, you know, mid to high pick, if you want to get into this card, if you're in white in draft and sealed, I do think in uh, standard this card might be interesting if you have a nice knight like tribal deck again. Um, but besides that, art is cool. I really love this card as far as the art goes. And uh, yeah, you know, low to mid pick for me, I guess, as far as um, like draft and sealed if you're into white. Um, but really, you need to have other cards with first strike to make this really useful. So if you have a lot of first strike, this card is just icing on the cake. If you don't, it's just a four mana 2 2 with double strike. That's okay. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. It's not just a single vanilla card. That's 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 the only thing I'm kind of concerned about here. Uh, next up for us, we have Lyra Dawnbreaker. This is a 5 mana 5-5 five, five angel. That alone is amazing, but it has flying, first strike, and lifeling. 
and you have other angels you control, get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. This is our new angel commander <laughs> for uh, commander, um, and also our angel commander in brawl, which is really fun as well. I love the art here, especially, and I think if you do get into this as your like opening pack, even though it is a mythic, if you get into this in your opening packs in draft or sealed, uh, this card might make you into a white player if you have a lot of good white angels or white cards to build around it. Just flying first dragon lifelink on a five mana five five is ridiculous. This card is a great bomb for white, um, but of course it's mythic, so you probably won't see it in draft or sealed that often. Uh, moving on here, we have Mesa Unicorn. <laughs> this is such a weird random card. This is a two mana two two with lifelink. It's pretty nice. It's uh, you know, it's a unicorn. I wish it was a horse. It feels like it's a missed opportunity that it's not a horse because uh, we have you know Crested Sunmare in the format right now. Um, this is fine. Um, just kind of confused why uh, this is in the set. <laughs> it's it's very weird. Um, we have on Sarah's wings here. This is a four mana legendary enchantment or enchant creature enchanted creature is legendary Gets plus one plus one and has flying vigilance and lifelink So this is actually kind of like mark of the vampire that was in Ravels of Ixalan. So this means it's a four mana on white um, That's very very good at being able to turn one of your creatures into a plus one plus one flying vigilance lifelinker And that's very good uh, on the board state Of course you do want to keep in mind that if you put this on a creature and, it's, and it turns it into legendary um, That it is uh, one of those things where you couldn't do multiples of these on the same type of creature So that's something to keep in mind mind um, but I do think on Sarah's wings is super good regardless of that um, so high pick for me in draft and sealed this probably won't see any kind of play in standard just a little bit too expensive uh, moving on here we have Pegasus Corsair 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 Pegasus Corsair I think that's what it's called so three mana one three Pegasus with flying whenever Pegasus Corsair attacks Another target attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. This card's really good. We had something similar to this in Ravels of Ixalan as a four mana, I think it was a dinosaur, like a three, three flying dinosaur for four. I think at the three mana slot, this card is so much better at the at the common slot as well. You're gonna see multiples of these two. A uh, three mana, one, three flyer is very good in draft and seal, but being able to give something else flying as well, that's just amazing. So I think I like this card a ton here. Um, I do wish it was, you know, a horse Pegasus. That'd be great as well. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that Crested Sun Mare. There's a lot of horses in here, but they're not called horses, so it's just uh, kind of sad to me. This card's very good, though, in Draft and Sealed. Uh, moving up here, we have Sanctum Spirit. This is a 4-mana 3-2 Lifelinker. Discard a Historic card. Sanctum Spirit gains Indestructible into end of turn. So, again, we can discard an Artifact, Legendary, or Saga from our hand there. A 4-mana 3-2 with Lifelink is okay, but making a 4-mana 3-2 Lifelinker with, like, Indestructible for a turn, that's a little bit better, because it does mean we can actually uh, kind of trade with something a little bit more in our advantage. Our, it, with our advantage, or with an advantage, there we go. <laughs> English, what is this? Uh, I think I think Sanctum Seeker is fine in Draft and Seal. Uh, it's an uncommon, so you're probably going to see one or two of them in the actual pool. Um, in Standard, this will not see any kind of play whatsoever, which is kind of sad. Uh, moving up here, we have Seal Away. This is a great removal spell, so two mana enchantment with Flash. When Seal Away enters the battlefield, exile target tapped creature and opponent controls until Seal Away leaves the battlefield. So this is as close as we can get to Journey to Nowhere without dries and getting wet, basically. Um, Seal Away is very good. It's uh, got flash, so as soon as an opponent attacks into you, you can just lock it down, which is awesome. Keep in mind, you want to probably like exile something while it's attacking in, so that damage that's about to hit you, you can actually exile Seal Away before, or exile a creature with Seal Away before the damage gets to you, which is pretty nice as well. I do think Seal Away is a very good card and a high draft pick uh, in draft and sealed. Might see some play in standard, uh, because it just it's, it's just cheap enough to where I'm just like, maybe, maybe. But I do think in uh, Draft and Seal, though, this card is just fine. Uh, moving up here, we have Sergeant at Arms. This is a 3-mana 2-3 Human Soldier with Kicker for 3. When Sergeant at Arms enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create two 1-1 one -one White Soldier Creature Tokens. Um, this is a common. So for a 3-mana 2-3, that's fine. You can pay 6, though, and get a 2-3 with two 1-1s. One -ones. That's really good on the curve, especially if you're in the mid to late game in a white deck here uh, in Draft and Sealed, and you have nothing but mana. Um, Sergeant at Arms is not bad at all. I think this card is quite good. Um, I definitely think this card will probably not see any kind of play in Standard, unless there's like a weird like Soldier or Knight deck or something like that again. Um, but I do think overall, Sergeant at Arms is probably a like you know low to mid uh, pick in Draft and Sealed. Moving up here, we have Sarah Angel. It's back, she's back. It's a 5 mana 4-4 four, four angel with flying and vigilance. I was kind of sad that this wasn't like shot down to common, um, but you know, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four flying vigilance is very, very good. You're going to see probably her once or twice in a draft and sealed pool. 
I love the art here. I think that a Sarah Angel has just always been a good card in Draft and Sealed and will always be a good card in Draft and Sealed, and that's no different here in this set. Uh, but of course, in Standard, you're not really going to see any kind of play with this card. Moving on up, we've got Sarah Disciple. This is a 2-mana 1-1 one, one Bird Cleric with Flying and First Strike. Whenever you cast a Historic spell, Sarah Disciple gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Uh, this is a common, so a 2-mana 1-1 one, one Flyer First Striker is very good. So getting a Enchantment Aura attached to the Sarah Disciple is actually a good idea that you want to do with this card. Um, I do think this card is not as good as I feel like it should be. The uh, historic spell, like plus one plus one, is nice. I wish it was like discard instead of cast, because it does mean that uh, an opponent uh, can just, uh, you know, we, have, we if we block with it, it you know, it just dies because uh, it's a one-one first striker. But I do think this card is decent enough uh, to be a, you know, like mid to high pick in a draft and sealed pool if you're into white and you like flyers. This card is good for that. I don't think you'll see this at all in a standard though. Moving on, we have S S Shalai. Shalai, I think it's Shalai. Voice of Plenty. This card is amazing. This is a four mana three four legendary creature angel with flying. You planeswalkers you control and other creatures you control have hexproof. That alone makes this card a straight up bomb. But you can also pay three, or not three, six, uh, which is four colors and two green. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. This card is crazy. This card is going to be definitely a brawl like commander. This card is probably going to be an EDH commander as well uh, in a green white pool. I think this card is super good in uh, draft and sealed if this is your rare as well. I just think all around this card is just kind of like amazing. It's like a 10 out of 10. Like everything this card does is good. It's got a, a nice big butt with a four toughness there. It's got a nice attack power with three. I wish it had maybe vigilance to like give it something extra, but I think everything else besides that is just ridiculous. Basically, they have to get rid of Shalai here before they can get rid of anything else on our battlefield, and that's just gravy. Uh, moving up here, we have Tesher Ancestor's Apostle. This is a four mana 2 2 legendary creature, Bird Cleric. This is another rare here with flying. Whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This card is super interesting. Um, I'm not sure if this card will be that great in uh, draft and sealed. However, I think this card might have some real longevity in play in standard. Just the ability to grab something from the graveyard back to the battlefield after casting an historic spell. Again, historic is legendary creature, artifact, or saga. Basically artifacts for us. Um, I think this card is going to be really, really good in standard. In some weird, like, combo deck, maybe? I don't really know yet. Um, I do think this card is super good for that particular reason, though. Moving up here, we have Tragic Poet. This is a 1-mana one 1-1 one human. You can tap it, sacrifice Tragic Poet, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, this card is okay. In Draft and Seal, this card might be okay to grab, like, your one or two of enchantment aura uh, from your graveyard. I do think in standard, this card will not see any kind of play at all. Um, it's kind of tragic, <laughs> barring the name here, uh, that this card will likely not see any kind of play in any format, other than maybe Draft Seal just being a one of or two of maybe. It is a common there, and it can get back into enchantment. So that's interesting. You know, it, I just don't think that we'll see too much of it, though. Uh, moving on, here we have Triumph of Jared. Jared? Gerard? Gerard, maybe. Gerard Butler? Yeah. <laughs> this is a two-mana enchantment saga. Chapter 1 and 2, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control with the greatest power. And Chapter 3, target creature you control with the greatest power gains flying, first strike, and lifelink until end of turn. This is an uncommon. Um, this card is actually quite good. Um, it kind of reminds me of something that was in, like, Theros block as well. I think the art is probably what's, is what's making me, like, think about that. Um, I think this card is very, very good. If you're in a, into white in draft and sealed, you definitely want to pull into this for sure. Um, I think in standard, this card is a little too slow. Uh, just because the, the chapters kind of happen turn after turn, and not necessarily like whenever you want them to happen. Um, but I do think Triumph he is pretty decent for Draft and Sealed if you're into white, uh, or you're just splashing for white for Triumph. That's probably fine too. And the last white card here for the video is Urza's Ruinous Blast. This is a 5-man legendary sorcery. Exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. Um, this card is like a weird like board wipe for you if you have a, a legendary creature on the uh, battlefield here. It's interesting. Um, I'm not too fond of it as far as being draft and sealed. It is a rare, so you probably won't get into it that often. You might actually see this being passed around a bit. Even though the art on this card is ridiculous and so cool looking, I do think that the actual ability here is not that great. And uh, of course, in standard as well, I think this card is probably another card that you won't really see that much of as well. I think maybe in commander, this card would be useful. Kind of board wiping if you have your your like commander on the battlefield. Again, it's non-land uh, permanents that aren't legendary, so it can you know destroy everything it lands and then your legendary creature so that's interesting for a commander and maybe brawl uh, but besides that then this card is uh you know not that great but that is going to do it for the video guys make sure to like the video if you like it subscribe to the channel and we will have blue coming up as soon as i can possibly get it recorded and edited out onto the channel i'm going to try and get these out as quickly as i possibly can because i know pre-release season is just next week so lots of hype and i'll see you guys in the next video peace